In this video, we're going to look at finding the midpoint of a line segment. Let's choose two points. I'm going to have this point here, A, and the coordinates of A are 2, 1. I'll then have a point B, and I'll put point B just here, and B will have the coordinates 8, 5. We might be asked to find the midpoint of the line segment AB, or the middle of the line connecting A and B. If I just went ahead on my grid and drew that line, we can see that the middle falls perfectly on the coordinates 5, 3. So if I just put this on, we would call the midpoint M, and that is the midpoint just here, and we can see that that is 5, 3. One way to look at this now is to say what's happened to the x coordinates from A to B. The answer is I've added 6. So if we look now with A and B, so with A, and b, the x coordinates we've added 6. If we look at the y coordinates we've gone from 1 to 5 we've added 4. Therefore if I wanted to get to the midpoint from a instead of going from a to b I can say I'm going from a to the midpoint I would need to add half of this distance. I would need to add half of this distance which of course takes us from 2 to 5 and from 1 to 3. So if you like, like uh, what you could do is just draw this up. So to get from A to B, we've gone across by 6 and up by 4. So to go from A to the midpoint, we go across by 3 and up by 2. And that works really quite nicely. With this approach, you can, of course, use it, and it will be valid throughout your studies. Let's look at another point. I'm going to take a point out here. Let's choose this point right here. I'm going to call this point point C. And C has the coordinates negative 7, so negative 7, 8.5. I'm going to take another point out here. Let's go ahead and take this point, which is going to be 8. And then we'll have, so we'll put this point over here. We'll call this point D. And we'll say that this has coordinates 8, negative 9. Now with this one, it's slightly harder. We could go ahead and draw a line between the two. But what happens, for example, if we had negative 742.8 and something ridiculous like so? So drawing a line is sometimes valid, but with this particular example, there is an easier way. If I look now, I've gone from negative 7 to 8. So if you wanted to, you could think to yourself, what have I gone across in terms of the x-coordinates? The answer is 15. Half of 15 is 7.5, so we'd need to add 7.5 to this negative 7, which would take us to positive 1 half. What have I done to get from the 8.5 to the negative 9? Well, that's a harder question. Then we would have to find half of that distance and go ahead and add it on. A different approach would be as follows. Informally, we can say the midpoint, which we call M, is given as the addition of the x's, so you add the x's and divide by 2, and you add the y's and divide by 2. This is the average of the two coordinates. So if we look at this, let's see if it works. Well, we have this point 2, 1, and we had this point 8, 5. So if I added the x's, I would add the 2 and the 8. I would then divide by 2. If I added the y's, I would add 1 and 5, and I would divide by 2. We can see that this is going to give me 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And we can see now this is going to give me 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that gives me the midpoint which we knew anyway. So let's look at applying it here. We've got negative 7. That is the x coordinate of C plus the x coordinate of D, which is 8, which I'm going to divide by 2. We've now got the y coordinate of C, which is 8.5. And then I'm going to add to that now negative 9, which is the y coordinate of D. I need to divide this by 2. So the midpoint is going to be somewhere around here. If I look now, 8 subtract 7 is 1. So this is going to give me 1 over 2, or 1 half. 8.5 minus 9 is going to give me minus 1 half. So let's just put this in. This is minus 1 half, or 0 0.5, divided by 2. So we could say now that this is going to be 1 half, comma, negative 1 quarter. A half divided by 2 gives us a quarter. And that looks to be about right. It's just there. 
to spot that though is absolutely it will be a nightmare and wouldn't be an accurate approach so to find the midpoint we can add the x's and divide by two and add the y's and divide by two so when it gets messy you can use this or you can just use a graphical approach if we now formalize this we can say that the midpoint m is given as the sum of the x coordinates so x1 plus x2 divided by 2 comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This is just a formal way of writing add the x's together and divide by 2, add the y's together and divide by 2. It's just the average of the two sets of coordinates. It's just finding the midpoint. Okay, let's have a go at a few. We're asked to find the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment joining each pair of points. So let's look at the first one very informally. If I think to myself now, what have I done to go from 0 to 8? The answer is I've added 8. Therefore, if I wanted to go halfway, I would add 4. 0 plus 4 is going to give me 4. I then say to myself, what have I done to go from 2 to 4? The answer is I've added 2. Therefore, now if I want to go to the midpoint, I need to add 1. 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. So we have now the coordinates 4, 3. If we wanted to look at that using the formula, we could have now the x's added together, 0 plus 8 divided by 2, and the y's added together, 2 plus 4 divided by 2, which is going to give me uh, 4, which is 8 over 2, and then we're going to get 6, 6 over 2 is 3, and as we expected, the midpoint is 4, 3. You could, of course, draw it, but I think that would be a bit uh, unnecessary. Adding the x's together, so we'd have 1 plus 7 divided by 2. Adding the y's together, 9 plus 5 divided by 2. So that's going to give me 8. 8 over 2 is 4. Four, uh, 14, so 9 plus 5 is 14. 14 over 2 is 7. Or you could say to yourself, what have I done? Well, I've added 6, so I need to add 3. That would give me 4. I've subtracted 4, so I need to subtract 2 which would give me 7. So they work out quite nicely. Let's look at this one. We've got negative 5. So we've got negative 5 plus 3 divided by 2. Then we're going to have 1 plus the negative 7, which we're going to divide by 2. If I've got negative 5 plus 3, that's going to give me negative 2 divided by 2. If I've got 1 and I'm subtracting 7, that's going to give me negative 6 divided by 2. So we could see this is negative 1, comma, negative 3, and that would be the midpoint. If you like, what have you done to get from negative 5 to 3? The answer is you've added 8, so you'd need to add half of that, which would be 4, and that would take us to negative 1. What have you done to get from 1 to negative 7? The answer is you've subtracted 8, so you'd have to subtract 4, which would take you to negative 3. So as you can see with these, different ways of looking at them. The reason I prefer this approach of just adding and dividing is if we get something messy like this one. So with this one, 2.4 plus the 0 0.6 divided by 2, comma, adding the y's together, 3.1 plus 4.5 divided by 2. So that's going to give me 3 divided by 2, and this is going to give me 7.6, so 7.6 divided by 2. At this stage, we could write these as decimal answers. I wouldn't really want to convert that as a fraction, and we could write that this would be 1.5 comma 3.8, and that would give us the midpoint. Let's look at this one here. We've got to negative 5 over 4 and negative 1. I'm going to, with this one, write the negative 1 as negative 4 over 4. You certainly don't have to, but it might help you out. So I'm going to add to this now negative 4 over 4. Especially if this is a non-calculator, it might help if you just convert the fractions. We're going to have the y coordinate of 2, and I'm going to write that one again as, let's write that instead of 2, let's write that over 5s. Uh, so we'll write, instead of 2, we'll write 10 fifths. So 10 fifths, so we'll write now that that's going to be 10 fifths, and then plus now the negative 3 fifths, and then we're going to divide by 2. You might have just kept those as whole numbers or integer values entirely up to you. So what we get now here is in the numerator, we're going to have negative 9 over 4 divided by 2. 
And in this one, we're going to have now 7 over 5 divided by 2. So that will give me negative 9 over 8. If we divide 9 fourths by 2, we get 9 eighths. And then we're going to have on this one, 7 tenths. If we divide 7 fifths by 2, we get 7 tenths. So as you can see with that one, I wouldn't want to try and graph that. So there we go. Uh, a few of those different questions. Let's finish with one question that might be on uh, an exam that you do, or it might be beyond the scope of your exam. We'll just do it for completeness anyway. Which of the point 3, 1 is the midpoint of the line segment AB, where A is 9, 8 and B is K, negative 6? We need to find the value of a constant K. If we think about this now, this is fairly logical. We've gone to the midpoint. And all I'm going to do is just quickly sketch a line. It doesn't matter how inaccurate your line is. What we're going to do is just put on the following points. So you might have already spotted a nice way of doing this. I'm going to look at it a few different ways. We've got 9, 8. We've got now B, which is down here. We've got now K, negative 6. And we've got this midpoint just here. I'm going to call this M. So let's put on M. M is going to be 3, 1. What I say to myself now is I need to find the x coordinate. I've gone from 9 to 3. That means that I've subtracted 6. So if that's the midpoint, I want to come down now to this point right here. So I need to subtract another 6 from this, which is going to give me now negative 3. So all I've done is simply said, well, I've come down by 6. Therefore, I need to come down by another 6 and that will give me the point there. If you are unsure, you could, of course, use the formula. If we think about the formula, what we do is add the x's, so it's x plus, uh, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and that will give us the midpoint now of the x-coordinates. So if we look at this now, what we can do is substitute this in. We've got 9, so 9 plus k divided by 2 will give us the x-coordinate of Solving this equation, we're going to multiply both sides by 2, so 9 plus k will be equal to 6. So I've just multiplied by 2, then I'm going to subtract the 9 from both sides. 6 minus 9 gives me now the negative 3. So that's what we end up with. So you can see this as jumping between a point and considering what you're going down by, or you can look at using this formula and simply sub it in. If it gets really messy, you might want to go ahead and do that. So let's just uh, let's look at one more. Let's say we've got now some points. Um, we'll say we've got the point C, and we'll say let's just make some numbers up. Let's say that C has the coordinates of one point five, then two point five. We will say now that the midpoint. Uh, let's do negative two point five, and then let's have Q. We'll have Q which we need to find, and then we'll have the point D, and let's say we've got P as the x-coordinate, and then we've got negative 5. So we've got this line segment CD, and we've got the midpoint M. We could go ahead and graph this, or we could simply use the midpoint formula. So we know that the midpoint will be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then we'd have y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So if we look now, the midpoint of the x-coordinates is negative 2.5. So we could say that negative 2.5 will be equal to p plus the 1.5. So p plus the 1.5 divided by 2. So we can go ahead and solve that. Alternatively, you could think to yourself, well, I've gone down by 4 to get to the midpoint. I need to go down another 4. So if I go ahead and solve this equation, multiplying both sides by 2, we've got negative 5 is equal to, on here, what's that going to give us now? P, and we're going to have now, so P plus the 1.5, and then we would subtract that from here now, and that is going to give me now negative, what we're going to have, negative 6.5, and that's P. And that kind of stacks up with what we would expect. We've gone down by 4, so we go down by another 4. Let's look at this one right here. We can say now that the midpoint is going to be Q. So we could have 2.5 and then we would add to that now the negative 5. We would divide by 2 and that would give us now the value of Q. So this is going to be negative 
2.5, so negative 2.5 divided by 2 is Q, so that's going to give us negative 1.25, and that would give us Q. So you could say to yourself now, how far have I gone down to get from here to here, and then subtract it away? Entirely up to you. So to get from 2.5 to negative 5, we've gone down by the 7.5, so we would need to subtract half of that from here. And I just think it's slightly easier to see it doing this approach. So that gives us the value of Q, and we solve from there. So this certainly might be beyond the scope of the course, but hopefully it will give you a good intro on some types of question that might involve the midpoint.